Welcome into the CHO Bears podcast. Happy Cole Komet Tuesday here on the show. Adam Hogue, Mark Carmen, Greg Rags Jr. with you. And we have Bears tight end Cole Komet as usual on Tuesdays joining us. <laughs> Cole, thanks for jumping on with us again this week. Yeah, good seeing you guys. Appreciate you. Um, I believe it's been, I didn't count the weeks. I think it's been five or six weeks since you've been on the show with Greg. Yep. And yeah, it's been, it's, it's, it's been nice. It's been nice. It's been a nice yeah. month. So. Uh, Cole's like, yeah, I've actually okay. been counting every okay. single day. I know exactly <laughs> how long. No, we, I'm kidding. It's good to have you back. Good to have you back. Yeah, I'm hoping you got your Christmas shopping done. I, I'm sure you got me something nice. There it is. Yeah. Yep. What'd you get Cole? <laughs> it's a surprise. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. All, right. All right. Well, we, we appreciate you being here. It's going to be a lump of... Cole, get it? Okay. Get it? All right. Uh, let's, uh, okay. let's move on now. Okay. I'm, yeah. Sure, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure. a guy named Cole has never heard that joke before. Okay. Uh, oh, just God. dawned on me like that was a genius <laughs> joke. So, somebody removed. The, the I know, should we button. fire him immediately? Yeah, can we remove? Ho, oh, go ahead. Get us going here, and then I'll go. All right. I don't want to lead off with my incredible question. You can lead off. If you have an incredible question... No, you I can start with that. I, I honestly, I just wanted to, I, I just wanted to compliment you, uh, which I've done to start the show each week. I, I watched your press conference on Monday. That's got to be a tough, you know. I, I would, I would think coming off of the game uh, on Sunday that ha- did that not feel like in a season of tough losses? I'm assuming that that felt like the toughest and the hardest to sort of get yourself going back the next day and like, okay, we're moving forward. And chances are slim, but but it just you know that I, I would think that that one sat the hardest of if, even looking back on Detroit and or Denver or whatever. Yeah, uh, you know that one hurts for sure. I think you know, and as a guy's offensive side of the ball, you know, you're definitely uh, looking yourself in the mirror just because you know you wish you could have just done a little bit more, just based on how our defense played throughout that whole game. So uh, definitely a tough one to swallow there. Um, but you know, leave it to Braggs to cheer me up getting on before to walk me through every single playoff scenario where we can still get in. So that's, that's uh, right. That, that's that right. is definitely that's uplifting. Right. So, yeah, but, uh, you know, we got to take it for what it is. You know, we, we looked at the tape, we're going to move on and get better from it. And then, you know, now we're on to, uh, to Arizona. Do you, guys, do you guys draw straws, uh, after losses on who has to do the Monday press conference? <laughs> no, usually, uh, I get like Aaron Clark or somebody come up to me and they're like, Hey, you think you can do media today? And it's like, yeah, I got you. So yeah, you know, usually you get that walk where they're coming up to you and you know that after a tough loss that you gotta get up in front of the podium and talk, but you know, it's all good. And that's when you're like, dang, I shouldn't have won that Jeff Dickerson media good guy award last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, yeah. wait, Cole, do you, can you, playing. can you tell though, Cole, like how many guys he's been to before coming to you? Cause he knows you'll say yes. Do you think he, you're like number one or do you think you're like the fifth guy he asks? Um, I don't know. I mean, I just always feel like when they ask me to do it, you know, I think it's important that, um, you know, we, we all represent the, the team and the organization well. And, um, I think it's important for us to get our message out to you guys. So, um, and then obviously you guys report it and all that stuff. So I, I think it's important to hear our, our perspective on things. And, um, you know, I feel like I give, I try and do my best to give you guys good insight whenever I have those opportunities, you know, whether it's win or loss and, uh, you know, I, I just try and look at it like, hey, whether win or, win or loss, you know, you try and treat it the same way and, and give give the information that you can in those in those type of scenarios. Bears are lucky to have you, Cole. 
On and off the field, brother. It's that's a rare. It's it's a big time comment right there. I think it's it's a t- completely understanding the game. Braggs, what is the chances, by the way, for the playoffs? That's right. right. Now? Just lay it out, please. Uh, per my guy CFCDP on Twitter, yeah. he shared this I mean, with obviously me. Obviously, he knows that yeah. guy's clear. Everybody oh, yeah, knows. That, this everybody guy. knows that. Well, guy. I want to give him credit. He he, he brought this to my attention last <laughs> but night. But also, obviously, he that said, guy knows the truth. It's not something that you're. No, it's a he simulation. Does. You know, um, okay. website you can use from like I think the New York Times. He says. Out of 23,716 simulations, there are 1,897 scenarios, which include the Bears in the playoffs, if you guys win out. So, this is more than a chance. Like, I'm a Absolutely. Marvel guy, Avengers, they had one shot in a billion. You've got, like, 2,000 shots here to make this. We just need, like, 15 things to go our way. But... I just think that we're in a good spot. That's what I think. Yeah, well, we'll, uh, well yeah, we got to take care of our things on our end and just take it one game at a time here, and we'll let the odds play out then from there on, I guess. But that's uh, that's not bad. Those are better odds than I would have thought, honestly. That's pretty good. <laughs> do you, I, I, you, your record is what your record is, but, but do you – is the fr- most frustrating thing about this that you feel like you should have been or should already, like, be in a better position as as a playoff team this year? Like, how do you look at – like, the most frustrating – if you were going to fill in the blank there, the most frustrating part about this season for me is – Yeah, I think you just um, – well, I think you look back at the the three games that we, you know, we kind of we kind of blew where we play really well and – we don't come out on top, and that's, you know, this past weekend, Detroit and Denver. And, uh, you know, you take and handle business in those games, you know, you're probably sit, we're sitting in a good spot playoff-wise. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of games that you could say, oh, we should have won. But, like, those are, you know, those are games that, you know, we just got to be able to finish out and we weren't able to. And, obviously, we would be in a better, better position at this point. Um, so, you know, you look at those, and it, it, it's tough for sure. But, um, again – we'll kind of ha- we'll have to reflect once the season's slowly done but we got to be able to move on here and and just take care of the things in our end and you know three three very winnable games here to end it uh outside in the cold you know just the way we like it yeah i mean obviously doing a little bit of fast forwarding here but just hypothetically speaking if you guys were to finish on a strong note like you guys want to do and you've win two or three games here would you consider that a successful season because of the improvement you made in the win column, or would you personally consider that a disappointment because of the missed opportunity? Yeah, man. I, I, look, this is the NFL, and uh, this might be a little too much for me to say, but like uh, how you measure success in this league is how you're remembered, and you're you're remembered by winning Super Bowls. So you gotta you gotta make the playoffs, and you gotta go, you gotta make a Super Bowl run, and. That's what this is about, and to me, that's what a successful season is. Um, you know, you want to be remembered in this town and in, in this league. You got to go win. Got to go win the whole thing. And uh, you know, you, obviously, you look back and you can reflect on good seasons and stuff. But uh, to me, it's always been about you make the playoffs and, and and you go make a Super Bowl run. So that's that's kind of my my bar for success, and um, I'm going to keep it there. And you know, I'm not going to be satisfied, obviously, with us being, you know, if we go two out of three here and we don't make the playoffs, like to me, that's just not, that I don't, I can't look at that and say that's a successful season in my eyes. Cause I, I just, that's not the standard that I or anybody else in our locker room holds ourselves to. So uh, yeah, I'm going to take our listeners and viewers here behind the scenes for a second. When you jumped out right before the show, Greg actually gave you those playoff prop, you know, situation scenarios, scenarios yeah. and, you, you honestly, and you kind of did right there even on the show, seemed a little bit surprised that they were that high. Does that actually give you, like, it's obviously like maybe that hasn't been on your mind the last 48 hours since the loss, but does that give you some type of boost in that, like, hey, maybe there still actually is a chance here? Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't really know that. I, honestly, I didn't really think it was that high at all. Um, where I guess I guess maybe when you say, like, thousands of possibilities out of whatever thousands of possibilities, uh <laughs> It makes it sound a little bit better. Yeah, it's eight, uh, it's eight percent with the two thousand. Okay, so yeah, it comes out to eight percent. Yeah, so that, you know, <laughs> but no, I mean, still, when it, when if you're still in it, you're still in it, and you know, obviously, there was things that happened this weekend that uh, were were in our favor in terms of whatever teams that lost. Um, so just gonna be on us to handle what we can handle here at the end and take care of our business, and then you know, wherever the cards, wherever the cards fall, they fall. And, and that's all, that's all you can kind of do at the end I, of the day. I had an 8% chance of getting this job, Cole. So, and, and you got it. Yeah. And yeah. I got it. 
It was more like point eight. Yeah, yeah. Like eight. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, no, I do think that there is a real chance that, like, you guys go in the land. I mean, obviously, I don't want to get ahead here. You got to win these next two games, but like, there is a chance you guys still go into Lambo Week eighteen, and like, that's a game that matters. That you're not eliminated, and maybe you need five other scenarios, but. You know, you can go into that game at kickoff, Lambeau Field, Packers, that whole deal, and still have something to play for. And, um, you know, as tough as some of these losses have been, I do think that that can't – and I understand what you just said about, like, what the expectations need to be, and I think everybody here agrees with that. Like, you know, everybody here in Chicago wants to be talking Super Bowls, not just meaningful Week 18 game. But I still think that that's – I don't know, like, counts for something in my book. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's – you know, at this point last year we weren't – we were kind of, I think we we're, you're out of it. Like, so there was nothing uh, playoff wise to, to really think about or play for. And so you're still in it now. There's a lot of parity in this league going on. And, um, you know, t- some teams are banged up. Some teams are getting healthy and, um, you know, we're, we're fairly healthy at the moment. So, you know, there's definitely a possibility for anything here. And look, we just gotta, we just gotta take care of our own business. We got these two home games coming up against teams who are used to playing in warm or indoor weather. So, uh, I think that kind of plays to our advantage, but we got to take a, take care of uh, Arizona here first. All right, back to Sunday's game against the Browns. There's a question here. Um, uh, Super chat, 499 from the Bears Bastard. Uh, quick question for Cole. When did they move you to tackle? Amazing block on Miles Garrett. Um, did he say anything to you about that play? That was awesome. I assume he's talking about the, the pin block I had. Um, I'm, I'm guessing, too, on the throw to Tanya, and I'm guessing. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, yeah, no, he didn't say anything to me. I, whenever you get, have to have a one-on-one block against a guy like that, and he's, uh, he's a freak, man. He's a freak. So um, was able to execute it. Justin was able to get around it, and, you know, you know, kind of whatever happened from there happened. But, um, yeah, definitely definitely not easy blocking that guy. He's a, he's a freak and one of the best football players across the whole league. How big of a focus was that for you guys? Because, and obviously he made his impact in that game. There was mm-hmm. certainly plays and snaps that he won. There were plays that and snaps that you guys won too. I mean, I remember looking at the film this morning. Mercedes Lewis had a great one-on-one block at one point on him where he yeah. just squared him up, and um, and that's why that dude's still in the NFL. Just how tough of a challenge was that once you guys actually got in the game and you have to deal with number 95 like that? Yeah, I mean he's he's relentless. He's really good, and you know they got a couple of good linebackers too who are pretty quick twitch. Um, you know Wusu, who's from I played with at Notre Dame, is a quick twitch guy. He's, he's got really good lateral sideline sideline speed, and um, obviously they got um, ninety nine as well. So yeah, they got good guys up front, and you know we made an emphasis on you know obviously knowing where he's at at all times and um, trying to take care of him as best we could. You know you know he's going to have his moments here and there, but. Um, Thought we did a fairly good job here and there, but we got to just be better in the kind of the key moments, making sure we kind of take care of him and you know the other guys across the defensive line. There, there was one play, Cole, where Brax is is trying to get outside, and you were you were charged with coming back in to pick up Miles Garrett, and and like you, it looked to me like you had no chance to do it. I think you guys lost like five yards on the play, and it was late in the fourth mm-hmm. quarter. Like. I, did you, when you look back at that play, like, was there anything that you could have done differently to make that easier on yourself? Cause it, it just seemed like it was like, how was he supposed to get there? This, it didn't make sense to me. Yeah. Um, well, so I blocked him on three other plays kind of similar to that. One, including the pass play, um, you know, all those type of pin or seal blocks that I've had, I had to do on him. Um, there was two other ones I think I had on him in the game and, um, so, you know, executed well in those moments, uh, a little bit different formations in terms of how we got to it. For that play, uh, I got lined up, and if I had to do it over again, I'd probably line up differently, but we had a motion going, so I, I couldn't, you know, shift shift myself uh, in the middle of the play there. But, uh, yeah, I wish I was probably a little bit tighter to him, a little tighter to Braxton. Probably I gave him way too much space, and then, um, you know, he got a great get off there and was able to get to the, you know, shot the back backfield right away. But, um, yeah, if I had to do it over again, probably just do my best to get, get closer to, uh, to Braxton there in the line of scrimmage just so I can kind of stick up that air so he doesn't have as much room to, to go make a play. This is going to get way inside football technique, but you're, if I remember right on that play, you have your inside foot up. 
Yeah. Is, is that to not give away the block, or is that one where you want to open yourself up to give you a better chance? Or is that, I mean, I'm sure you're doing it how you're yeah. taught. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't want to give up the block. Yeah, that, it's tough, man. I think he kind of eyed it, knowing where I was looking at, because he kind of, when I came, came out of the huddle, I could tell he was kind of looking at me, and I was looking at to see where he was so I can get in a good spot. And once I lined up, he shifted down a little bit, and uh, kind of from there, he, he set himself up pretty well to make the play. Um, but I just got to do a better job of, of, of setting my split better and, um, you know, maybe even changing the alignment there of how I'm set up. So, yeah, those are things we all talked about in, a, in the meeting the other day and uh, ways that we can kind of combat that, especially going against a, a blue chip player like that. I was going to let the I inside mean, foot thing is... go for the record. I wasn't going to bring that up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was, <laughs> well, I was, this, I was that's, all over. That's good. That's a good question. That's a good, <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I like, holy, holy coach Ho got of nowhere. Right. Because, I mean, I think this is interesting because I think this is something a lot of viewers, even including myself, guys that haven't played the game at the level you guys have, to understand where you talked about, I wish I could have shifted, you know, but I couldn't because there was motion. And talking about, you know, Miles Garrett looking at you and, and doing some different things. How much leeway are you guys allowed to have at the line of scrimmage, like away from what the coaches are telling you to do as far as running the play? Yeah, well, I think here and there, um, you know, we always look at our tendencies and what's, you know, what, what, what's what we've been showing on tape. Um, you know, for me there, getting in that type of stance, I think it disguises it more, you know, with the personnel that we're in. You know, is it run? Is it pass? Is he going to chip me? Is he going to do this or that? I think I think that's kind of what, what my mindset was and what our mindset was going into the week with that type of setup. Um, you know, there's times where if you have, you know, big personnel all up on the field and you got a bunch of big guys, you know, I get I can get in the square stance for a little more tighter or whatever it may be, just because that gives a little bit more of a run presentation to it, um, and then you can surprise off pass based on that that stance or alignment, um, but. Yeah, I think in that scenario, I think, uh, look, again, I can just probably do a better job of getting set up better. But, um, you know, you're always trying to play like the cat and mouse game with the with the tendencies and how you're lined up because, you know, they're all looking at that stuff to see, to kind of get an edge on you and maybe to snip out a play. So, um, you know, we do our best to try and disguise all that stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, you got to put yourself in a good position to, to make the block or execute whatever you got to do. That's super good stuff. I want to get to this comment here. Um from uh, Kyle Jenkins says, Hey Cole, it's coach Jenkins from Vider. Glad to see you're having a great year and turning into the leader in the locker room. I always knew you would. Wow. Oh yeah. What's up Kyle? Good to see you. Yeah, coach Jenkins, my D line coach back at Vider. That's good stuff. How much D line did you play there? I played a good amount. I was actually like half of my, uh, like half of my offers I got for college were for, were for DN. So, um, I played a fair amount and was was always in on third downs. I mean, really, never really left the field in high school just because of the numbers and all that stuff. But, yeah, played a fair amount of defensive line. Well, way more fun catching touchdown passes in the NFL. Can we talk about uh, the, the the third and goal? And you had the false start before that, which I, I'd love you to explain what happened on that play too. But uh, when you're coming across the field, at what point did you think you might get it from Justin? Yeah. Um, well, I didn't <laughs> – I ran the corner out and uh, was thinking that he'd maybe just pop it up to me uh, with man to man there. And um, when I turned to look for the ball, he was already gone. So I went to go look for him and scrambled around and made a move on my guy to the back line. And then I saw him, you know, whip back out to the left and uh, he was able to make a fantastic throw there in the back of the end zone. And um, I saw the, obviously saw how he was able to get, get away from Garrett there uh, after the game on film and, uh, pretty impressive stuff, you know, by Justin there to, to get out of that and then, and then make a throw in the end zone. That was pretty cool. It's not a bad catch either, by the way. That was a bullet. I, I know you should, obviously you're an NFL player. You're gonna, you should catch that ball. But that thing's coming with a lot of heat in a tight window. Yeah, he, he threw his fastball there for sure. That was a, that was a rip of a throw. And um, the only way he really could have thrown it, that was awesome. And, you know, was, was just a little past the outstretched fingertips of the defender. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, it, was, it was a good play by him. And, was able to secure the grab. So, yeah, good stuff there. It was, it, was, it was a good play for sure. Chris dropping a $2 super chat here saying, love you, Cole. Nice toe drag swag this weekend. Love it. Love Put it. the toes in on that touchdown, that's for sure. Well, cool. and I think when it comes to Justin Fields, like those kind of plays, like you talk about breaking out of Miles Garrett tackle, throwing a fastball to you to the corner is, is what 
fans and, and everyone understands what Justin Fields is capable of. I mean, when you see here these last few days with DJ Moore, Jalen Johnson, Darnell Mooney talking to the media and, and talking about how much they believe in Justin Fields, I mean, I have to imagine that that's probably the entire locker room with you guys and, and your belief in what Justin Fields is capable on this team. Yeah, I mean, well, Justin's our leader on offense, you know, obviously being the quarterback and all that. And, um, you know, for myself, I've, you know, really for me and Mooney, um, we've been with him since the beginning of this thing, you know, back when he got drafted here. And it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun to kind of to kind of grow with him and see him grow as a player. And then the growth that, you know, for me personally, like I've had since since he, he's gotten here has been, has been a lot of fun and cool, cool to see. And um, yeah, I mean, we got the utmost faith in Justin and you know, he's our guy and, you know, we're going to ride with him to the end here. And, uh, you know, he, he, you know, credit to him, man. I know he deals with so much on the outside here with this, with this media market, it is crazy. And um, it's been impressive to see how he's handled all this. And um, just a dude that keeps competing and, you know, really there in the Cleveland game, just kept competing to the end and, and, and gave us a chance there at the end with the Hal Mary and all that stuff. But uh Man, the dude just keeps fighting, and uh, he keeps coming to work every day with the same mindset. And that's just been that, that's been the most awesome thing about him. I mean, outside of scoring a billion points, what do you want to put on tape? What do you what, what kind of statement do you want to see the offense make here in the last three games? Like, how do you how are you looking at it? Like that, this is what we need to do to get a little bit, I, I guess, to the next level. However, you want to put it. Yeah, I think just going back to our physicality. I didn't think our physicality really showed up too much uh, in the game the other day, and. I think that's something that we need to get back to and uh, that we've done before. And that's, I think that's where we're at our best. And so I think that's just one thing that we got to really focus on and hone on this week. Um, yeah. I, I just thought, you know, that was maybe a little lacking in Cleveland the other day and, you know, getting back to our run game and, and all that stuff. Uh, and then it opens up everything else for us too. So uh, just, just getting back to our physical play style and, and in the cold weather here, that's going to be big for us. Cool. Is there, um, you guys have, if there's one thing you guys have been able to do all year with maybe just a couple exceptions like in Kansas City or against the Chargers, like you guys have come back from from tough losses. You guys have been resilient um, and pretty much given your chance in all but two games. Um, is there any, is, as a leader on this team, do you have to caution when you guys get back in the building tomorrow just to make sure that there's no, there's no letdown factor this week just because of how much that game Sunday meant for your postseason chances and, and things like that, just to make sure that the, you know, the focus level and the resiliency is still there. Yeah. I'm, I'm not concerned about that just because uh, that's never happened before. And I haven't seen that happen yet. And uh, you know, that's, I, I you know, you got to give credit to the, uh, to our coaching staff and flus for keeping guys in check like that and the way they're able to rally guys around um, after a loss and all that. So um, no, and, and look, the guys that we have in our locker room, they're, they're great. And, we got a young, hungry locker room that, you know, all these guys, we're all trying to prove ourselves each and every week in this league, you know, no matter who, who, who you are on the squad. But, um, yeah, no, not concerned about that at all. You know, we got we got all the dudes in the locker room that we need uh, to kind of push through this thing. And, you know, guys have been super resilient throughout this whole year. And so I'm super confident come come tomorrow that we're going to get back at it and guys are going to be focused on, on Arizona. Yeah, I know um, Kevin Warren has been, you know, um, seen a lot in the locker rooms here the last – you know, lot this season, um, and some of the 1920s video stuff they do in the off season, showing how involved he is with the team. Isaac Siegel here in the chat is a five dollar super chat asking that. Hey Cole, how involved would you say is a guy like Kevin Warren compared to you know Ted Phillips, who he, the job he took over for? Thanks, and he says by the way, Cole greater than George Kittle. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, well, Kevin's been awesome. I, Kevin's kind of a uh, uh, fellow Notre Dame guy in a sense. Um, so I had some, and so obviously Ted is too, but some connections there. But, um, you know, I was with Ted for a little bit at the beginning. Um, but Kevin, I mean, I, I, anytime you talk to Kevin, you talk, it's, it's always championship talk. And I, that's what I'm all about. And that's the language I like to talk, like to speak and all that. And uh, yeah, from the moment I met him, it's always about championships. And um, I think that that's resonated and that's been, you know, guys have been feeling that. And I think people throughout the building have been feeling that. And that's a, that's a good culture setter. And that's what, how you want it to be. You know, you want to be talking about championships, not just talking about, you know, meaning, meaningful games in December. 
does does that give you um, a level of trust that no matter, I guess, whatever decisions are made here, you know, within the next month, um, that the way Kevin has been since he got there, that you're, you know, as a, as a leader in that locker room, that there's going to be a level of trust that, you know, whatever the decisions are, they're for the right reasons and they're going to take you to that championship level? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's, you kind of, you, you have to have that trust and um, with everything that he's projected onto us, but, you know, from the moments that he's talked, um, you know, you, you feel that championship hunger to bring a championship back to, to Chicago. And, you know, you understand that's their main focus and goal. And, um, you know, that's the main focus and goal of everybody in the building. And that's, and that's what's most important. So yeah, there's definitely a, a trust element there. And, you know, uh, I, I have faith that, that, that that's what the, the mindset is and that, you know, any decision going forward that they have, um, it's, it's with that in mind for sure. I mean, when you talk about trust in the decisions, you know, obviously a locker room is about relationships, even friendships at times, but this is a business. So how, how hard is that to balance when it comes to being close with teammates and seeing guys maybe leaving or players that have left like Roquan or David Montgomery and trying to trust the organization to do the right thing for the team, but you also want the best for your friends or your teammates. Yeah, I mean, it just is what it is, and that's and that's this business, man. It's always hard to see guys go, and there'll be guys that that go at the, at the end of this year that leave that I played with for a while, or that played with this year and this past year that um, that I won't get won't get to play with again, just because that's how this league is, and that just is what it is, and it's always tough when you see guys go and like whether it was Rokon or David or, or guys that I played with my rookie season. And, um, you know, one thing that's constant in the NFL is change. And that's just is what it is. And you got to accept that as a player. And you just keep putting your your your, your best foot forward each and every week. And, um, you know, that's why I have confidence in our guys going into this week, just because, um, you know, whether there's something to play for playoff-wise or not, you're always going to get everybody's best because there's just so much to play for every week for every guy, whether it's, you're putting out film for, for the for the Bears for next year, or you're putting out film uh, for another squad, the the next year. Like you're always you're always trying to play your best, and um, yeah, that's why I always have confidence in these guys. But um, yeah, it, it's a tough deal, but that's just part of part of the business we're in. We got a fun one for you in a second here, Cole. But just one more on uh, the game, and just before we move on from it, Dar- uh, Darnell, one of your guys said that he thought that you guys could have been more aggressive in the second half and, and maybe just got a little stale. And then Flu said at his press conference that you guys need to take more shots down the field, that he wants to take more shots down the field going forward, I guess. Um, I'm just looking at the whole totality of, of the game. Like, it's not like the offense was ever really in the rhythm that you guys want to be in that you're, you know, that you're talking about. Like, how did you, did you think like in the second half that we need to be more aggressive at all? Was, did that ever even cross your mind? No, um, I didn't feel like necessarily we had to be more aggressive. I thought, uh, you know, you look back at the film, like there was plays out there that we had that we just got to execute better on and they were there. Um, but, you know, we, we, we just got to do a better job of, of producing first downs in that in that situation. You know, I talked about it yesterday. You know, you get to the second half there and um, the defense is playing how they're playing. We, we just got to find ways to get first downs. I think, uh, you know, the play that kind of changed the full momentum was that that boot play where Justin's rolling out and uh, gets tripped up. I mean, guy makes a hell of a play getting a shoelace tackle there. And Justin does everything he can to get the first down, but uh, you know, you get the first down there, you're, you're cranking more clock out, you know, at the very minimum, I think we're getting the field goal there. And I think that puts us up 27, 20 to seven, I think in that, in that situation, whatever it is. But uh, um, look, it just is what it is. And we, we got to just find ways to execute in those moments. That play was crazy because I think that's – It was. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, c- congrats to Cam Mitchell. He might be the only player in the NFL in that moment that would actually, I don't know, manage to get Justin down in that situation. Did Justin have – not that he could have because I think by the time maybe he's trying to throw the ball, he would have been getting tripped anyway. But is there the option to throw to DJ? Because it looked like DJ came open there. Yeah. I, <laughs> that's, I think I think if you got the clicker in your hand, you can say, hey, maybe yeah. pop up to DJ. But uh, that's a tough deal. He's trying to get away – get away from the defender there, gets tripped up a little bit. And I think at that point he's, he's doing his best just to get as many yards as he can before he falls down. So, um, yeah, I think with the click in your hand, you go, okay, yeah, maybe you could, 
try and throw a ball as you're falling, but it's yeah, a tough deal. That's and he exactly does everything. what I did. That's exactly yeah, that's, what yeah. I did. I clicked it and you I paused. said. Yeah, you paused it right when he crossed yes. the line of scrimmage and DJ was over. Well, I mean, yeah. I'm just looking at it from, as an athlete myself, what I would do <laughs> right. in yeah, yeah, that yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. That's all yeah. I'm saying, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah you I'm would, happy you got. You would start flying and then you throw the ball to DJ, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. A high step, Walter yeah. Payton, high step. You know, yeah, just absolutely. pull out all the tools in the package, you know. And I will say this. I'm happy you got the touchdown because if you didn't, after that false start, I tell you what, Cole, I would have you been you all. You would have lit, in, lit into me, huh? Yeah. I, or did, or it would have been a rough. Say? What, what did you say when I, when I, when I jumped? Well, what do you moment. think I said, Cole? I lost <laughs> my mind. I lost it. I lost it because. You know, it's like you're like a child to me now. I'm like you're like my kid. I need you, and when I'm di when you don't come through in the clutch, I get so disappointed, and I can't have this because I root for you so hard because you're a part of our team, and oh, I, I just appreciate it. I can't I appreciate live it. with disappointment. So I'm happy you yeah. got the touchdown. Got got in there. There was but. definitely a moment though where, and, and I'm forgetting which part of it. You it must have been late in the first half because you were trying to get out of bounds. I think you caught you caught a ball like at the hash and you managed to get all the way out of bounds. I think you stiff armed one or two guys to get there. I think that was at the end of the game. Maybe. What, yeah, what, yeah. Whatever half it was at the end yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, because he ran the yeah. guy over. And we were all sitting here watching the game. We we're like, he is definitely saying F you brag yeah, yeah. as he's <laughs> yeah, as that, he stiff arming. Exactly. Because at the end of the game, you were trying to get out of bounds, stop the clock. You ran that guy over. And I know in your heart, you were like, Braggs <laughs> wants me to run this dude over and get out of bounds. That's, yeah, I was just thinking about you the whole time. That's all I was That's what about. I figured. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm going to stick with the theme right now. Uh, I, I'm sitting at my desk today, uh, Cole, and I'm, I'm preparing diligently for the show. And Greg shows up and he sits down right next to me and he's got like the biggest piece of bubble gum. He does this all the time in his mouth and he's just chewing and it's nauseating to listen to and it's never <laughs> going to stop. And you can hear like every mound of saliva. And I'm just wondering, like, is there anybody not, you know, for you to call anybody out, but that's what I'm asking you to do here. Like, is there anyone in the locker room that is always doing something that just irks you that the minute they do it, you, you are looking for your way out of there as quick as possible? Dang, I, I don't know if I got any. Um, no, I mean, the one the one I can think of in the course of my career, like that would be odd or something crazy, is when I'd walk in to the facility early in the morning and you go in the sauna and Robert Quinn is in there with a six pack of Coca-Cola in the sauna. That was uh, that, that was quite the sight to see. I just feel like oh, that's a little, it's a little strange. And, so. and did he have the stocking hat on too? Yeah, stocking hat. Yeah, Bob. Oh yeah, my he did. He did. Dad, yeah. hold on. That's a awesome, dude. Would he drink all six of them? He like must. Just, I, I mean, he had like if you open his his shoe drawer, it was boxes and boxes of Coca Cola in his shoe drawer. That's amazing. So, <laughs> that's awesome. I think I think Robert Quinn is one of the most interesting players I've ever covered, and that just adds to the legend that is Robert Quinn. And I love that. I love that man so much. Yeah, dude. Dude would drink like. You know, a whole six pack of Coca Colas, and you know, go do his bod pot, and he'd be five percent body fat. It was pretty, pretty impressive. So when Ro Robert Quinn signed with the Bears, he claimed that he flipped a coin between the Falcons and the Bears, and it's long been debated whether or not that was actually true or not. I know that's probably true. That's probably I think true. it's true. That's probably true. Yeah. Kind of knowing him, like that's probably true. Yeah, was yeah. Old country for old men. I Call think the it. contract <laughs> offers were basically the same, and he literally did flip a coin. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I believe it. Hey, uh, we're, Cole, we're not going to be able to talk to you till after the uh, Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl, which is now the greatest uh, uh, bowl game I think that exists. Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl. Uh, Notre Dame going to take care of business. Yeah, they they need to. Like, come on now, I just got to pull it out. I don't know who's all playing and who's not based on. I mean, not like nobody plays these bowl games anymore. So I know it's weird. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't think Joe Alt's playing. Mm -hmm. If I saw that right, so yeah, yeah, no, he already declared for the draft. Yeah, yeah. Th these bowl games are like uh, it's like a preview for next year. Is that is that the best way to put them? Um, it, it's it's kind of become the new spring game. It, yeah, it really has. Yeah, it, it's too bad because you know I remember growing up, I loved watching the bowl games, and they all kind of meant something. But now with the playoff, it, it, it definitely diminished their their deal and you know now with the playoff the the expanded playoff coming in um well, i'm not sure how much longer these bowl games will, will well really did stay. you see 
Did you see Rashad Mendenhall's uh, suggestion that there should be the for the Pro Bowl should be all white versus all black team? Dude, I saw this thing. Yeah, that's pretty funny. That was, that's pretty Do you want to put your bid in for the all white team? I'll I'll put my bid in for the all white team. Yeah, I think I think we could do some damage. Yeah, I think the tight the tight end room would look pretty stacked, right? Yeah, tight end room would be stacked. I think we'd be. We we would be hurting on the secondary, especially. I was corner. gonna say who's playing could corner. You could yeah. you fill the roster? I'm not. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I saw Will Compton say, you know, we're gonna have to play a lot of zone coverage. Don't let anything over the top. Keep everything absolutely. in front of you. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah, that, that, that would be interesting. That'd be pretty funny. Yeah, Pro Bowl deal. I got one Christmas question for you that's football related, Cole. You, there's three games this year on Christmas. You guys are taking over the NBA. You, the, you you don't own Christmas Day anymore. Next right. year, Christmas is, is on a Wednesday. Mm-hmm. If would you, you know, that you could they could do something weird and have a late buy or somehow figure it out. Like, would you want to play on Christmas Day? I am a huge fan of playing on the holidays. So I love playing Thanksgiving and Christmas Day. I love it. I think it, or Christmas Eve, Christmas, whatever, you pick one of the two. But I love playing on the holidays. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, you get your family in town and um, the game just has a little more juice to it naturally. And um, But yeah, I love playing on the holidays. So any way they can figure that out, I'm, I'm kind of all for it. Whether it's you play a Thursday game the week prior and then you play Wednesday, um, but I love playing. I love playing on the holidays. I love it. Interesting. That would, that's one way to do it, right? You play on Thursday, then you play the Wednesday, then you get the big time off coming after that. Yeah. You, you could do it like that. There'd be one way. Uh, Philip here is going to close us out with a super chat. Uh, he says <laughs> that CHGO stands for Cole, Hogue, Greg, other guy. Oh, dang. <laughs> Yeah, and that's me. By the way, uh, this know. dude pays two dollars every day. My guy Philip, I love you, Philip, to just talk about how much he hates me. But I love you, Philip. <laughs> just know that, buddy. At least he's paying for it. Yeah. Cole, thank you so much, uh, and uh, enjoy. Have a merry Christmas. Uh, I do. I do have a Christmas present for you, Cole. Though for real, okay. real talk, I actually do. Damn. All right, so, we'll yeah. have to come in then and grab it at some point. All right. All right. Well, well uh, get the win on Sunday. Enjoy Christmas with your family, and uh, tell them we all say hi. We appreciate. Appreciate the time you've given us as always, and um, yeah, well, I think we, I think, I think it's a couple weeks till we talk to you again. I think it's after the Falcons. Game, awesome. So we'll, All we'll right. talk well, you to you. You guys have a good holiday, and I'll talk to you guys soon. You too, Cole. Right. Mary, Mary. All right, there he is. See you guys. Cole Komet. What did you just say? I said Mary, 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 Mary. Yeah, Merry I did. That's fine. Settle down, Braggs. Jeez, Mary, Mary. <sighs> what okay, can't... now we're okay yeah, saying Mary, you, Mary. The, Whatever. You guys are so particular about sayings. And well, now here's Mary... the deal: the Jewish it, guy it, can't say Mary, Mary. That, like, just say it. Just say it out loud. Go ahead. No, no, no. It is now Christmas week. I'm going to say Merry Christmas to everybody. Yeah. Happy it's Christmas. holidays. It's a day on the yeah. calendar. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. Merry Christmas, buddy. Well, I just never heard Merry Merry. Well, d- you didn't hear a lot of things. That's how I... <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear a lot of things. I've been hey. listening this whole time. You hey, did, uh, You did a m- pretty decent job there of, of paying attention. I'm proud of you. I can't <laughs> wait to see what Cole unwraps with his present from Greg, but meanwhile, NFL fans, it's time to unwrap non-stop football action. We only got a few more weeks, guys. Come on. Enjoy this, please. This holiday season, throw down on big matchups with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. This week, new customers can bet just 5 bucks on the NFL and score 150 instantly in bonus bets. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now with code You know it. CHGO. New customers can bet $5 on NFL action to score 150 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code CHGO. The crown is yours. You can take all 150 of that bonus, but just put on Cole Komet touchdown. Let's go. Touchdown this weekend. Just roll. Just put it all on Cole right there. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www1800 Gambler.net New York call 877-8 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y 467-369 in Connecticut. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issue at CD. DKNG.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. I'm sorry I'm laughing. 
I don't know what you're as laughing if at. The, as if that red was not hard enough to read. They changed all the numbers to words. Oh, well. <laughs> it's, numbers like, words. it's like somebody's messing with us. I don't know. How do we make this harder to read? That, that, that's a good move. I, I <laughs> let's see the degree of guilt. Hey, Blake from Galena, Carm hates babies. I'm I'm coming to Chestnut Mountain, buddy, and you're uh, you're taking me to breakfast, and we're gonna we're gonna have a, we're gonna hang. Um, just know that. By the way, Braggs. Yes, sir. It's getting easier for businesses to switch to electric vehicles. Is it? Yes, it is. That's something that we should all be getting behind for the health of the planet and for the well being of all of us who share it. That's right, Lawrence. The electric grid is evolving to meet your cleaner energy needs as we all move with confidence towards an electric tomorrow. Whether you have one delivery van or a whole fleet of shipping trucks, ComEd can help you to make the changes that make sense. It says ComEd can help guide you to help make the changes that make sense. Okay, sorry. I was too focused on doing my Gene Honda voice. I do love Gene Honda. Uh, bottom line, what should business owners do if they want to get involved as ComEd is leading, guiding them the way? Well, I'll tell you exactly what you should do. Go to ComEd.com slash clean to learn more about the resources, fleet rebates, and infrastructure incentives available to help businesses go electric. If you own a business, don't wait. Start making your plan today to switch to electric vehicles. Good for business. Good for the planet. Good for all of us. Go to comed.com slash clean. Don't did, laugh did, at me. Did you say comed.com slash clean? Well, I, kinda, really. he said I, said I, kinda, I had a stroke while I said it, so I'll say it again. <laughs> comed.com slash clean. Uh, before we get back to football talk, I just want to do story time with Carm for one second, if you don't mind. And Adam. go now and see how electric connects us to a better way of doing business and a better future. That was a second stroke. Yeah. <laughs> Right yeah, I, the end I, of the yeah, you're absolutely right. Comed.com <laughs> slash clean. Comed.com slash clean. Don't forget the addery wasn't over. I wanted it. I Hogue just wanted just to stop perplexed talking. Perplexed by me. And Carm. So um, that, <laughs> that wasn't our best ad break ever, but you know, it's, we move on. We, we, but we love our friends at Comed, and we're it's, improving. It's a great program, and and get involved. Okay, so I'd say you guys are close. We're so, close. That was a flus reference. Yeah, just uh, like the Bears. We're close. Okay. Maybe we should move on. I'll tell do story time later. Can okay, I get we got to my absurd picture, NFL right? thoughts? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Hogue absurd NFL talks. We'll save my story time for the end of the show. Okay. That sounds like a good spot for it. Yeah. I have two. I have one that I'm going to... This it was actually last week's absurd NFL thought that mm-hmm. is now I'm doubling down on because of the results of this week. But then there's also the other one that I want to get to first because I don't think this is getting talked enough about. But it was the storyline last night in the Monday night game, obviously, it started Sunday. I think Jake Laser broke the story that the Eagles quietly demoted Sean Desai, the Bears' former defensive coordinator, who was the Eagles' defensive coordinator, who they hired from Seattle this year. It was a big hire for them. And I get that they, you know, Sean Desai is a good coach. I get they felt like they didn't make a move. They The Eagles' defense have been horrible the last two weeks. Like, so two weeks of bad defense. So they promote Matt Patricia? Who's got like literally no track record? They don't like him in New York, in uh, New England. He was a joke in Detroit defensively. I urge any. <laughs> this is how are we not talking about this more? This is so funny to me. You go, go back and turn on any Mitch Trubisky game against the Lions, and try to come back to me and tell me there's an argument that he should be the defensive coordinator of the Eagles right now. Right. Like what? Yeah. Uh, Again, I get that they felt like they had to make a move. I would have stuck with Sean Desai. It was like two bad weeks, maybe three. I'm forgetting now. And they were they were bad weeks. But like... I spent a lot of the year wishing Sean Desai was still here. But anyway, keep going. Right. And, and, and you, Okay. Okay, Nick Sirianni. You think Matt Patricia is your answer to, to winning the Super Bowl? Once you're in the club, you're well, in the you club. Can, and you can definitely tell that there's starting to be friction in that locker room. Do you remember who the, uh, if, if the Eagles are going to make the Super Bowl, of all the franchises, this should know this. Nick Foles won a Super Bowl MVP with the Eagles against Matt Patricia's defense. Yeah. In that game. That's a great underline. Whoops. Any, fr- of, uh, any franchise that shouldn't have made that move, it's the Eagles. That's well, it's also like I just anybody it's that's embodied failing up. The NFL is whole besides exactly. Mark Harmon. But it's also like how we recycle. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> that was funny. Mary, Mary. Goodness Mary, gracious. Mary. But seriously, this is the definition of how we recycle coaches. Just the dagger right to the heart. I mean, Carm. Right. Yeah, I, I'm I sorry. Mean, no, 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 no. I, I was going to. The reason why I just gave the look I gave is because I was going to make a joke about myself. And then this guy over here. <laughs> The the bricklayer who somehow fell into media prominence, <laughs> failing up. <laughs> I've been on his ass the last couple of days. Go ahead. I'm the sorry. The last couple of days? The last couple of years. Yeah, that's true. Um, All right. My second one, just doubling it down on last week. People that work here don't know how to spell your name. <laughs> Keep going. Well, that could apply to me, too. Yeah, I, no one ever knows how to spell my last name. Um, the There is going to come a time like five, ten years down the road where someone is going to point out, hey, remember that week where Tommy DeVito and Zach Wilson won NFC and AFC Offensive Players of the Week? What a joke that was last week. Like, it made no sense at the time. Brock Purdy, meanwhile, had cemented his MVP status basically in his game that week, but they're like, oh, no, Tommy DeVito, great story. He's the Player of the Week. Zach Wilson's the Player of the Week. Zach Wilson got benched again on Sunday. Trevor came out and played well, too. It, even no, he then. didn't. He they didn't play well. Zero <laughs> he, played, he, played, he played better than Zach. He I played in the game. He played better than Zach. He played some football in a football game is what happened. It's 14 to 26, man. They scored zero points. Tommy DeVito and the Giants did nothing. I think DeVito left that game for a little bit, too. Come on, NFL. Are you serious? You just like... It, there's never been a bigger... There's a lot of East Coast bias in the sports world. I don't think there's ever been a bigger one than that one. Oh, we're in New York, so let's give the two bad NFL quarter or NFL quarterbacks in this city the player of the week just because. Just because. It was, uh, apparently, yeah. Mr. DeVito is over the whole Italian thing that all the Giants are, you know, every, everything is about him is being he, a gangster and all that. And it, well, he's over family it? family is the one leaning into it the, the hardest. Is he over it because every Saints player, after every time they yes, made a tackle, amazing. was going like this the whole amazing. game? And by the way, I had never heard it called Italian fingers, but that's what one of the Saints defenders called it in his postgame. Huh. And I was like, Italian fingers? Well, they no sacked them seven times. Yeah, and after each one, they were yeah. all like... The other thing that came out with this Eagles game was, and I was going to ask Cole about this, we didn't get a chance to, with the tush push and how much I'm, I'm against this now. I, I don't like it, I don't, and I hate everyone that likes it. Did you see how Jason Kelsey got the false start for moving the yep. ball forward? Yep. And now it's starting to come out that he's been doing this for years. Well, he's been and warned we a talk zillion about times. Gamesmanship. Absolutely. And I know how much you hate cheaters. I don't like cheaters. I don't like the tush push. And now I'm finding out that Kelsey is moving well, the ball <laughs> up. Every center do that on any short. Well, that's play. what I was curious about. That's what I wanted to ask Cole about was like how much something like that happens. Cause I, I, it never. Like, it, he did it so seamlessly. I'm like, wow, that probably happens all the time. We only had him for 35 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a lot to get to. Um, Yeah, that's interesting because it's, I guess it probably. It's a game of inches. I mean, look yeah, at the, it does make the a Justin bit. Fields, you know, falling short of the first down. I do love, here, this can be my third absurd NFL thought of the week. Um, The I believe it's accurate that the officials called more offensive uh, offsides in the past week than they had in the last two years. It's okay. like they're just doubling down on the call they made yeah. against Tony. Right. They're, they're, they're just like, okay, well, this is going to be our thing now. And then meanwhile, still can't get Justin Fields a late hit call. Jesus. But, but keep calling these guys who are an inch offsides. I mean, seriously, there's only three games left in the season. If Justin Fields goes the entire year without one, now at this point, I'm rooting for it just so we can like bring this up for the rest of our lives. How ridiculous this is! Yeah, the the one on Sunday was was uh, absurd. Like, has has Brad Allen been disciplined yet? It almost feels like Brad Allen was like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna give you three points at the end of the half here by calling." Uh, a penalty there because your offense has been so bad that you don't deserve it. Like he made a he made an overall judgment decision on on the Bears' offense. Yeah, no, I'm not calling that. You guys have been too bad. Well, I do feel like the fact that it was a hail mary trickled into the thinking, just like it does on pass interference in that situation. Like we're just not calling penalties on hail mary. I would love to know. This sounds like something Kevin. We got to put Kevin Fishbane on. How many penalties have been called on hail marys? Like in the last decade. I bet you it's less than five. 
Just penalties in general. I'm not. Right. Oh yeah. I'm, right. I'm not even just pi. I'm saying holding, offense or defensive holding, anything. It's like the, I mean, late it, hits, anything. Right. I, I. It's just like they're like, well, this is a this play doesn't matter. We're just gonna let the ball. Well, even the final play of the Seahawks Eagles game where it hurts, you know, bombs it downfield to AJ Brown. To me, it was pass interference. It looked like pi, maybe. Yeah. But nobody even even brought it up because it's one of those like, well, we're not calling it there. That was another thing I was going to ask Cole. Like, what do you try to get away with on a hail mary that you would not any other play? But we didn't have enough time in the thirty-five minutes we had. I was, I, I, I know we didn't. We, we need we need more time because I did want to yell at him about not somehow catching that hail mary. I don't care where was he. Like, we he was need in the him back. to catch. I don't care. Catch it. He was do the one something. helping. Tip it didn't it. save us. Yeah, didn't he start the tip? Yes, process? he did. Yeah. And then when Mooney. Tipped it back to him. Still can't believe Mooney. He should have fell on Mooney when the ball was on Mooney and <laughs> smothered the football into Mooney's belly, and we would have won, and we'd be in the playoffs. Oh, God. It's brutal. Yeah. Mooney got pushed. I get brutal. it. Brutal. I mean, Atlanta benched their starting know. quarterback. It's all right there in front of them, and they freaking blew it. I'm surprised you have Here's the problem with that, though. Taylor Heineke gives them a better chance to win the Soldier Field than Desmond Ritter. It's brutal. Why do you say that? Because he's got more experience. Have you watched Desmond Ritter? Yeah, not Desmond enough. Ritter Desmond sucks. Ritter just lost yeah. to the Panthers. He just threw the ball. Taylor right. Heineke. Yeah, he won a few games. Uh, oh my God, he took, the, he took Washington to the Taylor playoffs. Taylor Heineke I, I was think, the think, backup I think here. I, I, You'd I, love him. Didn't he win a playoff game that year? If we had Heineke, we'd be all in. You're right. I think I was thinking Tyler Palco. That's fine, Heineke. It was either he got him Tyler in Palco. and then almost won. <laughs> is it Taylor Heineke or Tyler Palco? Taylor Heineke is from the – he played at in I know who Taylor Heineke well, is. I don't know. It doesn't sound like he did. No, I didn't for a Tyler second. Tyler Palco <laughs> played in the worst game I covered ever. I was there. The Chiefs-Bears game in 2012. We lost, what, 10-3? And it was Jimmy Clausen, right, versus Tyler Palco? No, it was uh, – It was somebody uh, terrible. Shoot. Who? Yeah, who was playing? They lost, right? Bears lose to Tyler Palco. It was close. But Kyle Orton actually started that game for the Chiefs. People forget that. But he got hurt, like, on the first series. I think he, like, okay. broke yeah, yeah, his yeah. Matt Forte injures, knees as bear, injures knee as Bears fall to Tyler Palco. Chiefs 10-3. I was right on the score. Who? December 4th, 2011. Who played quarterback for the Bears? Who played quarterback for the Bears? Uh, Caleb Haney? 11 for 24 for 133 yards. Yes, he threw three interceptions and a quarterback QBR of four. It was so bad. Caleb Haney, Tyler Powell. The night before that, Wisconsin. Orton, Wisconsin Orton. Pl- I'm still talking. <laughs> Wisconsin played Michigan State in the Big Ten Championship the night before with Russell Wilson, and it like it was an unbelievable up and f- back and forth oh, game. I was there. Yeah, yeah. Jeff... Yeah. Duckworth, was that his name? The wide receiver? It was like basically a Hail Mary uh, that was short of the end zone, but then they ended up still scoring. It was an unbelievable game. And then I woke up at like 5 a.m. the next morning to drive from Indy to Soldier Field, drove straight there, and proceeded to watch the worst football game I'd ever seen. You know, that, that was the first game because I used to only go to like one or maybe two games a year at that time. And that was the first game in my lifetime that I had. Le- we left at the end of the third quarter. Wow. We were just like, there's. We could go back. And the to only the, touchdown we was could go the back hail, to the tail. The only touchdown drunk. was a hail mary. Speaking of hail marys, yeah. the Chiefs Palco threw a hail mary at halftime. Yep. You, you want to guess who the Bears' leading receiver was that day? No, no, I don't want to think about the it. The Duke, 1999. Okay, another <laughs> possibility. Could Poles trade back to secure the bag? We assume that means he's sticking with Fields, but then bam, he selects Jaden Daniels or some QB at a lower pick. If it happens, I get credit on draft night. That's fine. I'm a little, speaking of that conversation we just had with Cole, I'm a little bummed Jaden Daniels not playing in the uh, whatever. Yeah. It's, uh, to me, it's the Outback Bowl. Who's the Duke's new avatar? Isn't that uh, the former uh, sport, sports reporter? Uh, is that, you're saying that that is uh, yeah. Max Please. Mercy? Not Max Mercy. Please. Ben Bentley? Not Ben Bentley. What? Who's the, Who was the first guy? Don't ask me. It's whoever Gleason? you were reading. Yeah, Bill Gleason. That's who you're saying Whoever you were right? reading in the yes. 50s. Oh. I think you're saying it's Bill Gleason. Uh, the third leading receiver that day for the record was Devin Hester. The third leading? leading? Yeah. He had three catches for 35 yards. Put that guy in the Hall of Fame right now. 
I hate you. Are you in the market for a new vehicle? If you are, then we have some great news for you. Our partner, Ray Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and Fox Lake is making room on their lot for incoming 2024 vehicles. And you know what that means? You get to take advantage of it. You'll be able to shop incredible savings on every new vehicle in stock during their limited time wrap up the year sales event. For a limited time, you can get up to 15% off a new 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokees. That's what I drive with dealer discount at Ray CDJR. You'll always be able to shop one of Chicago land's largest inventories and drive home with more money in your pocket than you'd expect. Thanks to Ray's price promise. Don't miss out shop. Great deals all month long and say big because Ray CDJR makes buying a new vehicle more affordable than ever. That's not all just for listening. You can get a free oil change when you mention CHGO at the service center or mention CHGO when you book online at Ray CDJR slash service. Hurry in. You must book before December 31st, 2023. So if you're in the market for a new vehicle, then you have to check out the team at Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram because they are the only team we recommend. Go ahead, go in there, say hey, tell them that CHGO sent you. Visit them today on Route 12 in Fox Lake. For more information, visit Ray CDJR in Fox Lake or RayCDJR.com. Serving the community since 1963. And if you're looking for the best price and the easiest process in the secondary ticket market, download the Game Time Ticket app. You get $20 off with the code CHGO on your first purchase. You should not have to worry whether you're buying tickets and where you're going to do that for your next big event. Just don't even think about it. Game Time is the fastest and the easiest way to buy tickets for sports, music, comedy, theater, any event that you want to go to. They've got tickets for you, and they do have the lowest price guarantee. You find tickets elsewhere that are cheaper. They will give you that price plus 10%, lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, all of it right at game time. If for some reason down the line you can't afford the tickets, they'll take care of you in that way too. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code CHGO, $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account, use that redeem code CHGO, $20 off. Download Game Time today, last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Bulls tickets uh, for the Lakers tomorrow, of course, are on the expensive side, but you won't get a better price than that. anywhere else on Game Time. You can get in for 90 bucks. Well, what about yep. I'm challenging you to show me what a good price for the Bears on New Year's Eve is because our guy Jonathan Otten... Yeah, he put last night. He put a ten dollars super chat that I forgot to read on Bears After Dark. And then he tweeted at me. You know, jerk. Jonathan is. I know I'm a complete jerk, and I promised him I would bring this up today. Um, he's the one that brought us the brick, painted the brick. Huge supporter of what we do here, and he said he was going to the New Year's Eve game and wanted to know what he where is the best place to sit in Soldier Field. And I, I told him my on your couch. <laughs> on your couch, Jonathan. Well, if you're going to the game, though, well, to me, the best seats are those low on the on the upper tank first rows because it cantilevers over the field. I know you're talking about, yeah. I don't know uh, if to you, me, have you ever the, sat in those seats. Yes. Uh, I sat there amazing. Wisconsin Blade and NIU one year. Great seats. Yeah, so and basically anywhere is 300 levels, my favorite. High before. enough that you got a good view of the whole field, right. but – not super high where you feel like you're in it, dep space. it depends on your budget. But right to that game right now, I think the best seat is 436, it's, which is 400 level. But those seats are still good. And those I think it goes up to the 30th row up there, 38th yeah, row. Yeah, it it's a climb. So this is row 15 middle. So you're dead, you're, you are at the 50, and it's under 100 bucks at 93. But I wouldn't. That's too high for the mansion. Yeah, I know the mansion's not going up there, but it's a climb. You, you don't have to sit with the mansion, and and that's you know there could be a benefit to that. Uh, but tickets for this Sunday <laughs> are cheap. I mean, if you want to go see the Bears, and is this still the read? Or are we just talking? No, I'm just telling. I'm not being honest. No, we're giving. Yeah, this no. is not the read. This oh, okay, is, this is not the read. But I'm just telling you, you can get into the game. Uh, the cheapest seat right now to get in for Sunday is thirty one bucks. Yeah. Oh it's yeah. Christmas Eve. People yeah. got yeah. People got things. What to do a up. shame uh, for Fields and Cole and all those guys. If they had beaten Cleveland it been a to go vibe. to Soldier Field yeah. with playoff implications, Justin Fields has never walked into Soldier Field seeing a crowd with that kind of hope, like yeah. uh, playoff hope. Um, so I'm disappointed for them that they didn't get to experience that kind of electricity. Oh, speaking of games on Sunday, can you guys convince my wife to let me take James to the Lions-Vikings game? No, we cannot. Why not? Why not? 
Yes. Because don't you go absolutely to the, should do that. the Lions Vikings game. Who cares? My my son loves that stadium. We went took a tour of it in the summer. You wouldn't want to go to Lions Vikings. It's at noon. I'll have no. to skip the pregame, but I'll Lions still I'll still be back to watch the Bears game and do the postgame with you guys. Oh skipping pregame. No. Yeah, no. Okay, yeah, now exactly. you're out. Yeah, no. now you're oh, out. Skipping pregame. Okay. Yeah, take Carm's like, you're gonna leave me with <laughs> I got I got a hard no on that. I was like, it's Christmas Eve. You're staying at the house. By the way, Sunday's weather is supposed to be a high of forty nine. Great day to go to the Bears, man. Still alive. But for real, though, I mean. Serious. 50 degrees for 30 bucks? 50 degrees. That's, that's a, that's you should go. Cheap tickets. You should go. Hey, by the way, um, uh, this is big breaking news that's so shocking. And everyone's going to be so shocked. But Aaron Rodgers says on the Pat McAfee show that uh, he's not coming back. What an exhausting story. Yeah. No, congrats oh, to Aaron. Aaron. This year. But he is going to come back next. Is there year. anyone other than Greg Braggs who likes people to talk about him more than Aaron Rodgers? No. Seriously. No. This guy is unbelievable. Well, by the way, I'm actually going to give him credit here. This was a brilliant job. Of all the things and reasons that Aaron Rodgers has strategically done to keep his name as a conversation constantly. Why does he care? Th- this was next level. I'm going to come back in less than four months from an Achilles and people are going to believe me. And they're going to talk about it endlessly. Well, if they had been in the playoff race, do, do you think he would have tried it? Yes. Because I do. Yes, I, I agree do, with you. But that was part of it. No one thought that they'd be in the playoff race once he got hurt. Yeah, well, Zach Wilson. football fans can tend to be dreamers. Uh, he is medically cleared to play. And now he's saying, being medically cleared, this is per rap sheet who's tweeting this from the Pat McAfee show, being medically cleared as 100% healed is not realistic at 14 weeks. Well, no shit. That's what we were saying the whole time. See you next year, bud. Uh, By the right. way, he might be coming to Soldier Field next year. I was looking at the potentials for schedules next year. It's interesting. Let me check that. Let me let me uh, let me do a. While you do that, just quick story time with Carm yesterday as I was All hanging right. out at our great place, uh, Midtown Athletic Club, and we're in, in it's mid class. Once again, thanks for telling me you were there and inviting me. You were in a meeting with upper management for seven hours yesterday. I think. <laughs> so, so I didn't get a chance to see you. I figured you were um, in a master negotiation mansion style. But so uh, if the Bears are able to finish in third, basically past Green Bay in the standings, they would host Aaron Rodgers and the Jets next year. And there you go. Go ahead. So... We're we're going through the poses in 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 yoga that Bragg's an expert in, and and out of nowhere the the instructor's like, okay, you know we're 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 here, okay, and now flip it flip it flip into a pigeon, <laughs> flip, into a pigeon. <laughs> flip into a pigeon, and I was like, the way she, the way she said it, it was like, I I, I like it was like had like a sort of a a touch of 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 sexualness to it, like <laughs> flip into the pigeon, like like that's the next move. And then, so I'm flipping into my pigeon as best I can, which means slowly getting my leg in a place that doesn't want to go. And then the next words out of her mouth was, I've been married for 21 years. You got to keep it fresh. And I was like, this is the yoga class that I want to be a part of. (laughs) Because I literally, I had the sexual thought. And then the next words out of her mouth, she knew it sounded sexual. And then she went, you got to keep it fresh. 21 years. Flip into a pigeon. So for all, any of you long time married pigeon. People, yeah, for any of you long time married people out here watching CHGO Bears, that's my recommendation to you via Midtown. Keep it fresh. Don't be predictable. You can get creative. Flip into a pigeon. I believe in you. All right. When Baldy comes on tomorrow, he yeah. He's a yoga guy. You need to ask him about his pigeon. <laughs> okay. Tell him to demonstrate the pigeon. Because I don't know the pigeon. You don't know the pigeon? I don't know the pigeon. Oh, I'm an entry level yoga. Yoga. Well, guy. Adam, you're trying to loosen up your hips is the point of the I pigeon. Need that. Yeah. yeah. My I, right hip. Everybody is needs oh. it. That's why when you just sit in it and relax and you yeah. feel the pain, it's beautiful. Super chats. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Rodriguez, five dollars. Hi, if the Bears retain Flues <laughs> and Washington fires Rivera, do the Bears pick up the enemy for the same role assistant head coach? And OC still has something to prove. Highly doubt it. It's interesting. Then you're going back to the offense we all hated, though. 
Uh, C. Thomas, too strong of a personality to go with Flus if that was the situation. Yeah, I don't know. Four ninety nine draft a center, number one overall. Hell yeah, punter at number five. Eighty percent to a hundred percent holes filled. Then, yep. The punter. That, that was C. Thomas Brennan, not C. Thomas Howell. In case you were thinking oh, it was okay. the actor. Yeah, draft center number one overall. Crystal, what's up, Crystal? Four ninety nine. Well, I'll pay five dollars to say how much I love you, Carm. We have to balance it out. Hey guys, just sending some love. Bear down. Crystal's the best. Crystal's the best. Crystal is the best. Uh, it's something that was a great thought that I just lost. So you can end the show now because okay. I'll think about it. <laughs> Thanks, um, Cody Demando. What's up, my man? What did you just call him? Demando. I said Delmendo. What? I think you he missed left the L. L well, maybe I think I there was the Demendo. It's because the L was in his uh, comad read earlier. Dot clom. So that was the L that he. Yeah. Did. Frags is always hogging all the L's. Oh. 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 Yeah. Okay. There it is. Took another L right there. Didn't and take that's an L we're against. Gonna we're gonna end the show. Didn't take an L against Arizona like your Badgers. Well, yeah, we had the balls to actually go down there and play them in their place. That's some neutral site game in Indianapolis where I get to sit courtside. <laughs> illegally <laughs> you went Ill- illegal illegal court site Carm's proud of you that's, yeah, that's, that's proud of never been. I do like yeah illegal. I asked for a photo credential they gave nope. it to me are you serious yeah okay. we don't need details and so then I, yeah I'd keep well, that I mean I'm yeah, don't, don't keep that for next time don't tell all the people how you did it yeah, I do whatever I, mean, I want I gotta go okay <laughs> I, should we end with one more story oh of course one more story so in 1993, game four of the NBA Finals. You were what, 46? I was 46 years old, and I, the Bulls would give you out. They'd give out home games A through P for every single potential playoff game if you were a season ticket holder, which I was fortunate enough, thank you, Fred Carvin, to be. Greatest performance in father history. And so when they would sweep games, you'd have the end of the tickets. Those were never going to be used. So I figured I'd just show up with these tickets and try to sneak in with, like, the game P tickets, that even though it was, like, game H or whatever it was. But then I got nervous, and uh, I got out of line with my girlfriend at the time. And uh, this guy comes up to me, and he's like, what are you doing? Because he had witnessed me do this, and I was like, well, I've got these tickets that are on for today, but do you know an usher up there? And, or or what, what, what do you got? Because I thought he was a scalper. And, and then he's like, wait, 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 what are you doing? And then I told him again, well, I was going to go in on these fake tickets, but if you got somebody else, I might just try to get some. Lifts up his shirt, out come the handcuffs, bang. One handcuff to me, one handcuff to girlfriend Katie. Off to the jail we went. Jordan scores 55. I missed it. Game 4, 93 finals. But the whole point of the story is that in the... In the, in the didn't even break the law. Yes. Well, how do yeah, you I was going to say, how they even Total BS. Them? I was screaming at you the guy. You didn't do anything. I'm like, if I'm standing outside a bank and I say that I'm going to rob it, but I didn't yeah. do it, you can arrest me. I'm like, what, you can't arrest me for this. He's like, one more word and I'm going to kick the... Li- okay, okay, sir. You got it. No problem. Let's. Oh, you got one of those. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So... So we're we're in I'm in the cell and like literally everybody in there had like tried to get in by like climbing up the fire escape and like had done everything they possibly could to get into the place. But one dude in there had gotten in and he got in with a photo cred. He had gotten through like gate three and a half at the time and he got in with a fake photo cred. But he's in and he's up at the, you know, he 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 didn't want to be up in the mezzanine taking pictures of Jordan that he was gonna sell. So he went down on the court, right under the basket with his fake photo credit, and he's taking pictures, and down there is when he got nailed, and they sent him to Braille, to jail, uh, whatever, the holding tent in, on the south side. So people in that cell who had, like, literally tried to get in through the fire escapes and myself, were, they were all looking like, wait, wait a second, you were in the stadium. You were in the stadium. <laughs> you're, like, you're our and, hero. And, and this guy, you know, he was... Uh, the nerdiest looking pocket protector guy said, yes, I was. I was in the stadium. But you wanted to be on the f- on the floor? That's right. I wanted to be on the Hell floor. Yeah. And, and the I mean, the whole cell went right nuts on this guy who had gotten in and could have seen game four and just sat in the mezzanine and enjoyed Jordan beating the Suns in the historic game. But he needed to be on the floor. And that that guy is. Hell he took yeah. it too far. He went too far. He took it but too you far. didn't, buddy. Your photo cred worked. That's how I do. Yeah. Well, he, for the record, he had a legitimate credential. Yeah. You did? Yes. 
<laughs> he didn't. It's not. It. Brags in the stands is not legitimate. Come yes, on. it is. It's a network. It, well, it was a network for like a day and a yeah, half. Yeah, it was a YouTube. network. Yeah, and then it wasn't. Yeah, it is. Just like the Brandon Spano network was once a network, and now it signs your checks around here. One day I'll be signing don't your ever checks. Compare oh. yourself. <laughs> don't ever compare yourself to Brandon Spano. Did you hear that? He just compared himself to you. That is one of the most offensive things I've ever heard on this show. Just like Brandon Brandon's respects a dreamer. Brags, in the meantime, the dude, in I was the sending Car Moti- Jordan motivational videos yesterday too. All right, now we uh, got to get going. Yeah, so we, we have to go. Uh, the Duke. Oh, do we? The Duke. Yes, who- we do. For your stupid <laughs> Cubs that you love so oh, much. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, the Duke actually does sign our checks. To- here's $20. <laughs> <laughs> hear-, hear me out. For all in. Intensive per okay yeah. yeah this is a whole it's a whole thing here okay keep going all right here we go for should I read it verbatim is that part of the yeah, 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 yeah. I cannot yeah. believe he screwed up for all intense no, and just keep no reading. I think There's I'm supposed like to nine s- other ones oh. he screwed up okay he's doing this on purpose so I'm gonna read okay, it verbatim I'm sorry for all intensive purposes polls is gonna evaluate the QBs and the deals he can get for Fields versus the pick what we think is a Mute. mute point, but spelled M U T E. Again, mute, intensive. I know the podcasters can't see how it's spelled, though. Yeah. It's a doggy dog world. Hogue, does this anger you that I that you scro- screwed all this up? There's a brief second when I read intensive that I got a little angry, and I mean, then I got it. And I would have gone with intensive humor. porpoises, but that's just me because yeah. I like dolphins. <laughs> Duke, nothing you could do could ever anger me. Duke, I'll see you at the bar. All right, I'm going to go do my pigeon. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with Baldy, and we'll talk some things about football and Bears stuff, and then we'll get ready for what I don't know. This Cardinals game just the one thousand eight hundred and fifty seven scenarios. The Bears. Oh, can make we the need playoffs. to have. You think Braggs will be healthy enough to work three days in a row? <laughs> we need to get Bo and <laughs> Bo and uh, and Johnny on at some point this week. It's a hey. PH next week. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that too. I uh, hope everybody enjoys their Tuesday. Uh, please hit subscribe. Uh, we have gift memberships available for CHO diehards, and that's a great last-minute ki- Christmas gift. You get this cool box here and all the things that come inside of it, uh, but you also get the membership right away, so you can hand it out this week if you're still looking for a Christmas present for the sportsman uh, in your life. AllCHO.com slash diehard. I'm telling you, it's the best way to go. It helps support us, too. We appreciate your support. Uh, and, of course, the CHOLocker.com, all that merch as well. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great Tuesday. We all silly like the mayor. 